Hello everybody, hope you're well. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be talking about why sex is a positive feedback loop. And uh, you might be surprised to learn why that's the case as well. We're gonna be talking about why uh, sex drive isn't a thing, uh, why arousal is important, but also why having good sex means you want more sex. But before we do that, I'd like to say that my name is Andy. I do sex education videos on this channel, which is a really good reason to stick around because you learn stuff like what we're learning today. So the first thing to point out here that sex is not a drive. It's not something that you need to stay alive. It's not uh, like food or water or heat or shelter. All those things you need to stay alive. If you get too cold, you die. If you don't eat, you die. If you get hypothermia, you get too wet, whatever, so you need shelter, you die. And if you don't drink water or water-based things, then you die. Sex, however, you don't need. You don't need to have it. Some people never have sex throughout their lifetimes, and then of course they die, but they die of old age, hopefully. You don't need it, it's not a drive. Sex is therefore a desire. It's something that you want. Now, one of the reasons why sex is enjoyable and why you want to have it and you have a desire is because uh, as humans, we've evolved like that in order to reproduce. Up to very, very recently, uh, there was only one way of reproducing and that was a male flavored person having sex with a female flavored person, meaning that the female flavored flavor person gets pregnant. But even now, you still need, uh, with IVF and all the rest of it, you still need sperm. You know, there's the, there's, you don't, just because you don't need to do the sex part doesn't mean that you don't need the, the things. That's another video. I'll go into that another time. But 99.9999% of cases, sex is required. So uh, that's why we have evolved to enjoy sex because it's a necessary thing for us to reproduce. Brilliant. But... Like I said, it's not a drive. You don't need to have sex in order to live. So if it's not a drive, then what is it? Well, sex is a positive feedback loop. At this point, I should explain what a positive feedback loop is. And for that, I need an analogy. Well, I don't know, let's use house prices. Now, a positive feedback loop means that when something happens, it perpetuates its own thing. It just happens more, it goes up more, it does all this thing and it's, it's, it's self-perpetuating. Whereas a negative feedback loop is the opposite. The more something happens, the less likely it is to happen in future. So house prices are a positive feedback loop and a positive feedback loop happens in both directions. So if house prices go up, that means there's people that want to buy houses now before they go up further which means there are more houses that are being sold, which also means that the house prices go up. But also, if there are less people wanting to buy houses, the price goes down, which means that people wait to buy houses, waiting for the price to go down further, meaning that price will keep on going down. That is also a positive feedback loop because the supply is changing the demand. It's the same with sex. The more good sex you have, then the more you want sex. And the more bad sex you have, the less you want sex. Both of those things are a positive feedback loop. If it was the other way around and a negative feedback loop, that means the more good sex you had, the less you'd want sex. Obviously that's not true. So that's why it's not a negative feedback loop. Well, why is that important? It explains why when a lot of people start a relationship, they have sex a lot, and then when that sex becomes samey and not as good, you have sex less and less. But if you haven't had sex for a little while and you have sex again, you think, oh, this is good, and you have sex more and more. Or if you change to how you're having sex, or you do different things because we like novelty, therefore good sex, and it perpetuates more sex. Not just in relationships, it could be the same with masturbation. You like masturbation, you do more masturbation. You have the same type of masturbation, it gets boring, you have less masturbation, 
and then maybe you then go for a couple of weeks or even months or even years without masturbating and then you do it again and you think, oh, this is brilliant and you start and it ramps up again. So it's not just actual partnered sex, it's all types of sex, solo sex, partnered sex, all kinds of sex. So this, there's this kind of stereotype about married couples having less sex. Like as soon as you get married, then the sex goes up while you're trying to have a baby. And then as soon as you've had your babies, wow, it's off the table. I mean, there's two things there. Firstly, there's babies get in the way of that, right? <laughs> babies don't respect when you like sexy time. <laughs> and I'm being a bit heteronormative here, but you get my point. So it's not because they're married. You know, it's because other things get in the way, therefore they have less sex, therefore because they're having less sex, they have even less sex. Maybe the sex they're having is the same, it hasn't really changed, and it just gets, you know, thrown onto the back burner, and uh, there are other priorities. As such, there are less sexual stimuli, therefore less sex. It's, all, it's, it's like such a simple concept in so many ways, but when explained to you, you're now thinking, oh, that makes a lot of sense. And when I first heard this, I was like, that makes so much sense. You'd think, you'd think it would be an obvious thing, but because we're taught wrongly that there is a drive for sex, that you uh, have that sex drive and it kind of goes off the cliff after a while, because we're taught that there is a drive for sex, it doesn't make sense in that context. If there was a drive for sex, then that would never diminish. Because just like you need to eat and to drink and to find shelter and warmth, just for those things, those things don't diminish over time. You need to do those things every single day. Whereas your sexual desire goes up and down and up and down, and it's based on stimuli and often how good of sex life you're actually having. One of the good things about this means that if you think you have a low sex drive, even though we've already worked out that sex drive isn't a thing, the good news is that if you think you have low sexual desire, uh, then you know you might have a situation where you have more uh, sexual breaks than accelerators and things like that. But if you have a good experience, that means you want to seek out those experiences more and you get more sexual desire, as it were. It's a positive feedback loop. And it only takes one really good encounter to put that up the scale. So in many ways, you should forget about everything you've been taught about sex and sex drive before. It's not true, the vast majority of it. Just think, if you have a great sex life, that means you want more sex. Simple. If you don't have a great sex life, there's nothing wrong with you. You can change that. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. You can do that just down below. I make videos regularly on this channel, so do subscribe and click the little bell icon so you are notified of when I next upload. And leave a comment below. Tell me your thoughts on this uh, idea of there being a positive feedback loop for sex. Thanks for watching and I hope I will see you next time. Bye bye.